Hello everybody and welcome. I'm making this series of videos because I've gotten a lot of requests to. I started off my YouTube channel by creating videos of free code account. Some of those have been updated or changed and now I thought it'd be perfect for me to redo the course, especially because when I first made them I wasn't as knowledgeable and acquainted with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript as I am now. So without further ado, say hello to HTML elements on basic HTML and HTML5 from Free Code Camp. Let's start. So basic HTML and HTML5, say hello to HTML elements. Welcome to Free Code Camp's HTML coding challenges. These will walk you through web development step by step. First, you'll start by building a simple web page using HTML. You can edit code in your code editor, which is embedded into this web page. Do you see the code in your code editor that says h1 hello and then closing h1? That's an HTML element. Most HTML elements have an opening tag and a closing tag. Opening tags look like this. Closing tags look like this. The only difference between opening and closing tags is a forward slash after the opening bracket of a closing tag. Each challenge has tests you can run at any time by clicking the run test button. When you pass all tests, you'll be prompted to submit your solution and go to the next coding challenge. To pass the test on this challenge, change your H1 element text to say hello world. So here we'll do hello world. So now we have an H1 and as we see it does this live. It automatically changed it to world as soon as we changed it and then erased it there. So this is the same as if we would have a file named anything.html. It doesn't really matter what you name it. It's basically a text file but instead of ending with .txt it ends with .html. Once you create a file that ends with .html you should be able to open that file. I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's important to understand how any of this would even run. I mean, it's kind of weird just to see it displayed here. But basically, you create a file, and then once you save that file with these H1 tags that say hello world, and then you open it, it should open in your browser and look like this, hello world. Let's continue though. Run that test. We did pass. Submit, go to the next challenge. Now it says basic HTML, HTML5 headline with the H2 element. Over the next few lessons, we'll build an HTML5 cat photo web app piece by piece. The H2 element you will be adding in this step will add a level 2 heading to the web page. This element tells the browser about the structure of your website. H1 elements are often used for main headings, while H2 elements are generally used for subheadings. There are also H3, H4, H5, and H6 elements to indicate different levels of subheadings. Add an H2 tag that says cat photo app to create a second HTML element before your H1 element. Hello world. We go back up here. Let's say this is our file. Right under it, we're going to do an H2, which is one of lesser importance than H1. We'll say cat photo app h2 so if we run that we already see it here the subheading to our h1 there's an h2 so to make sense of this this is usually like the main heading and then we can have subheadings and then an h3 would be even smaller even though you shouldn't you shouldn't base your size on whether it's an H1, H2, or H3, we'll learn about controlling the size in a later lesson. Right now, just understand that the H1 and H2 and H3 are more for the meaning of what the content presents. So you wouldn't use an H1 just to make your text bigger. You would only use it when it represents your main heading. And this also matters when SEO is involved, which is how Google and search engines categorize your page and your content. So let us just erase that and run this test. We did a pass. Let us continue. Basic HTML and HTML5 inform with the paragraph element. So we learned about headings. Now we're learning about paragraphs. P elements are the 
preferred element for paragraph text on websites. P is short for paragraph. You can create a paragraph element like this. We have an opening P tag and a closing P tag and in the middle are content. It says create a P element below your H2 element and give it the text hello paragraph. So we go back here. Now we're going to do a paragraph. P and a closing P. In between there we want hello paragraph. So let's do hello paragraph. Run test. We did pass. So that's the paragraph element. So here's basic HTML, HTML5, fill in the blank with placeholder text. Web developers traditionally use lorem ipsum text as placeholder text. That just means text that we put to fill in. It's not really meaningful because someone could just change it. But it's so that we can get a fuller looking presentation of what our website will look like or our page will look like. So lorem ipsum text has been used as placeholder text by typesetters since the 16th century and this tradition continues on the web. Five centuries is long enough. Since we're building a cat photo app, let's use something called kitty ipsum text. So replace the text inside your P element with the first few words of kitty ipsum text. So we'll take this, control C, go here, paste. And as we can see, it changed in our live view. Run test, we pass, go to the next one. This is on comment HTML. They added a comment here. So commenting is a way you can leave comments for other developers within your code without affecting the resulting output that is displayed the end user. Commenting is also a convenient way to make code inactive without having to delete it entirely. So comments start with that and ends with that. Uncomment our comment here. There it is. We uncommented it. Run test. We passed. Our next lesson is comment out HTML. So remember that in order to start a comment, you need to use this here. And to end it, we end it this way. Here, you'll need to end the comment before your H2 element begins. So cut that, place it there, and then and place it there. Run test. So it says comment out your H1 element and your P element. So I did it wrong. We want to add that there. And here. Now run test. We did a pass. And let us go forward. Delete HTML elements. Our phone doesn't have much vertical space. Let's remove the necessary elements so we can start building our cat photo app. Delete your H1 element so we can simplify our view. Here we go. Run test. And we deleted. Now introduce now introduction to HTML5 element. HTML introduces more descriptive HTML tags. These include header, footer, nav, video, article, section, and others. These tags make your HTML easier to read and also help with search engine optimization, SEO, and accessibility. Again, SEO is just the way search engines categorize our website. If it's super done descriptively, it improves our SEO. So the main HTML5 tags help search engines and other developers find the main content of your page. Note, many of the new HTML5 tags and their benefits are covered in the Applied Accessibility section. Create a second P element after the existing P element. Let's do that. With the following kitty ipsum text. Here it is. Copy. Go here. Paste. Wrap the paragraph with the opening and closing main tag. Our paragraphs start here and it ends down here. Again, this might seem like why would we even want to do this? Again, it's for SEO purposes to help search engines categorize our content correctly. Run test, past, add images to your website. You can add images to your website by using the image element and point to a specific images URL using the source attribute. An example, this would be image source, and then we have this link. This is a link to a JPEG, which should show us this image. Note that image elements are self-closing, so that means it doesn't require a closing image tag. All image elements must have an alt attribute. So they say must 
it actually doesn't require it, but it is a must if we want to be good developers. Alt text is a an attribute that is used for screen readers to improve accessibility and is displayed if the image fails to load. So anyone who cannot see the greatest can still hear the alt text. Also, if the image doesn't display, it will have alt text to explain the image. So no, if the image is purely decorative, using an empty alt attribute is best practice. So here it is. If it's decorative, meaning it's just a background which doesn't mean anything, then it's best to keep it empty. Ideally, the alt attribute should not contain special characters unless needed. Let's add an alt attribute to our image example above. Image, so this is the image. Enter an image tag before the h2 element. Our h2 is up here, before it would be on top. We're going to do an image. So here we put source. And within here we want a URL, which they gave us this one. Let's add it there. We have our image here now. Now set the source to there, which we did. Finally, don't forget to give your image an alt text. We can go here, do alt equals upside down kitty with greenish eyes. So you guys really could do whatever. It's just again for making sure those with vision problems can have a reference of what the image is about. So we did that. Let's run this. We did pass. So link to external pages with anchor elements. You can use anchor elements to link content outside of your web page. Anchor elements need a destination web address called an href attribute. You also need anchor text. Here's an example. So this creates a link. They call it an anchor tag. The attribute it has is just a link to our where we want to link to. And this does have that closing tag. Between it, the content should be the area that you want to be blue or which will be clickable. This links to freecodecamp.org as a link you can click. And that link will take you to the web address freecodecamp.org, which we specify in the href. So this allows us to create a link. So then your browser will display this text, this link to freecodecamp.org, as a link you could click. And that link will take you to the web address freecodecamp.org, which is what we specified in our href. So create an A element that links to freecatphotoapp.com and has cat photos as its anchor text. So it doesn't say where to put it, so I'll just put it here and do an A tag with href as this link here. Copy, paste it outside of it, close, and then do cat photos and then close anchor tag and there we have it cat photos to run test and we did pass so this will be the last one i'll do for now but this is linked to internal sections of a page with anchor elements so anchor elements can also be used to create internal links to jump to different sections within a web page to create an internal link you assign a links href attribute to a hash symbol which is this symbol, plus the value of the ID attribute for the element that you want to internally link to, usually further down the page. You then need to add the same ID attribute to the element you're linking to. An ID is an attribute that uniquely describes an element. Below is an example of an internal anchor link and its target element. Here we have an anchor tag with this href that links to contacts header. And it'll display the word contacts, which will be clickable which link to contacts header. Then we have this H2 way down in the page somewhere that has the ID of contacts header. So once we click this, it should navigate us to this element. So when users click the contacts link, they'll be taken to the section of the web page with the contacts header element. Our instructions say change your external link to an internal link by changing the href attribute to footer and the text from cat photos to jump to bottom. So if we go over here, like it says, our external link, which is this link here, we're going to want to change it to an internal link, which means it links somewhere to a section of our web page, specifically the one with 
the element with an ID of footer. So and then change this to jump to bottom. So remove the target blank attribute from the anchor tag since this causes the link document to open in a new window tab. So right now, if we were to click this, it would open a new tab, which we don't want to do. We want it to directly from our same web page go to the footer ID or the element with the footer ID. So then add an ID attribute with a value of footer to the footer element at the bottom of the page. So we have our footer here. We want to now give it an ID which is footer and this now will allow us to click this and it should take us all the way down to our footer. So let's try that. So it opened a new link which it shouldn't have done. The reason is because we haven't ran our code I believe. So I did erase that one part. So it did work. Let me get out of here and I just want to make sure we can click. So for some reason it's still opening a brand new tab which it should not do. So if you do this on your own editor outside of free code account you create a index.html file in a folder and you open that blank text document and you add all this code and then you open that file in your Chrome browser or your browser of choice. It should, I'm going to just show you what I mean before I end this video. I'm going to copy all this, right? I'm going to go to my desktop, create a new folder. I'm going to call this, I don't know, sample, sample free code camp. So you could do all this from a regular text editor. I use Atom, which I'll open now so you guys can see it all in action and it doesn't just stay confined to FreeCodeCamp's online editor. So this is my editor and even to make it easier, I'll do it without the command line. I'll simply open my folder, which is that empty folder I just made called sample free code camp. Now I have this open. I can create a new file within there. Call it index.html. So now I have this blank HTML file. If I go out of here and look inside there, you see that file lives here now. Index.html. If I open it, it's just a blank file. If I go back over to Atom and add our cat photo app, save that, go back here and refresh, we have our cat photo app. Now if I zoom in and press jump to bottom it should not open another tab. See it took us to the bottom where our copyright is. If you guys are understanding this so far we'll end it here but we learned a lot of stuff like heading elements which we used here and they mean or they're used to represent the importance of titles or headings H1 being the most important heading all the way to H6. We learned images which was an image tag. We have our anchor tag which was this jump to bottom and we learned paragraphs and we learned that certain tags help in indexing with search engines. So there is a main tag wrapped around our paragraphs and I believe also our image yes our main goes around our anchor our image and paragraphs and that is there if you don't believe me you can open up your inspect here and if you look at your element open the body there is a main and the main has our anchor image and paragraphs nested inside it so if you guys are understanding this so far you guys are getting the purpose of these lessons We'll learn a lot more in the following and upcoming lessons. Make sure to share, like, and subscribe if you found this helpful. And I'll see you in the next videos.